we're back again now. Um, again, we've gone through and we've shown you, we've already inspected this truck. This, of course, is a different day. We're getting back to shooting some new videos. So um, we went through this truck. We've inspected the fluids. We inspected the lights. Uh, we've inspected the equipment. We've even given this one a bath and rewound the wire rope. And we're at to pick our first car up. So we went ahead and placed our gloves on the ground, kind of stepped it off. So we've got a pretty good idea of where we need to back up to. And so I'm gonna back up here to my gloves, using my gloves as a marker. And again, these videos are not designed for the fella that uh, has been towing for a long time. They're designed for people that have never been in towing before and are considering it for a career and they want to make certain that uh, they're prepared before they go to the first job. Or maybe it's a towing company that wants to have a kind of a little bit of a standardized video for everyone to watch. It gives you maybe just a, a little bit of heads up. I'm going to be a little bit short on this because look at my bear. I see I'm about four or five inches short on covering up the back of my gloves. So the first thing I do, I always stage the wire rope to the driver's side. That's the side I'm going to get out on. I chain my chains up as short as I can and I go over the edge. I do not go through the T-slots. And my reasoning for that is I just don't want my T-slots wore out. And if you go through the T-slots, the wire rope's way out there in the middle of the bed. I'm six foot tall and I can't reach out there. So um, putting it over on the side uh, makes it better for you and the company because nobody's paying, paying for a, uh, an injury by stretching up there and trying to reach over and grab it. So for me, and I didn't put the PTO in gear. So let me go back up here and flip the PTO in gear. I did put it in gear. There it goes. I did put it in the gear, it just didn't take off. There it goes. So first thing I'm gonna do is what I call staging my winch. So I'm gonna I don't like freewheeling. I know different people will agree or disagree with that. Um, I've had some experiences over the years that I just would prefer you not to disengage the winch. Um, I'm not going to say you won't ever disengage it, but I think on a normal tow there's no reason to disengage it. If you can put the wheels to where the bed hits the front of the front of the tires you don't need to pull out more than a foot of rope maybe two foot at the most and you can stage this thing to where you're ready to go with it and again my purpose for staging is once I lo lower this bed on the ground I'm not under the front bumper reaching in and trying to get to it I've already got it there and it's waiting and it's easy to get to again I'm gonna roll the bed back till we get up to the lime it dip in there's locks under the front of this so that when it comes down and it's flat, it locks in there. So that's the point at which you want to try to tilt the bed. <coughs> you want to have it completely flat coming up, and when you're going back, that's a good spot to get your habit in too. We're going to switch around here a little bit. I'm going to wait till that bumper's just about on the ground on this truck. It's adjusted really close. That way when it's down, that gives me more stability. It gives me the wheel stability plus that is stability. We're gonna run this bed back and see how close we get. Again, I, I think based on my gloves, I'm gonna be about six inches off. Yeah, maybe a little more than six inches. Should get us close enough here. We're gonna... Toss the chain behind, that's the reason we stage the chain so it's easy to get to. On these Mustangs and most cars and the control arms are in the frame, there are holes that you can use to pull cars up on the bed with. We're gonna go around to the other side now. Oh, I don't get up and down as easy as I once did. All right, get this side here, we'll throw the chain back. All right, we've got those in there. We come up here on the passenger side.
And again, I'm gonna get it taut, and then I'm gonna go rid of these to put it in neutral. So I, w I don't want it, t I want it tight before I ever put it in neutral. Can you get on here? Neutral. Tighten it back. Okay. the bed. Uh, I actually didn't do that bad of a job of aligning it this afternoon. <coughs> but again, the car rolls so you can adjust it, adjust it with the steering wheels. It's coming up the bed if it's not where you want it. Um, so we're going to get it on the bed up to, it's like it's going to be just a little bit tight to the other side. So again, I always take my glove off warm out today so I've got my windows down on this I turn it just a little bit we're gonna get it on the bed till we get about midways of these straps both front and rear of course Okay, we're about midway. So these are called ratchet straps. We talked about them a little bit in the prior video. But if you push them all the way back and put them down to release position, that makes it to where it's in kind of freewheel mode. You can pull your strap through nice and easy. Again, here you want to go 10 and 2 is where you typically want to do. We talked about that in the earlier video a little bit. But again, everything's like 10 and 2, 10 and 230, somewhere right in there. I always pull my strap hand tight before I start ratcheting. Keep the, keep the, the free end tight or out of the way so it goes up nice and straight. And again, I'm looking for some deflection on the wheel and I'm making certain that this latches down and locks in place. Then we go on to the next one. After I get my first one on, I got almost sidetracked there a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this down just ever so slightly. And roll the bed forward to get the, both the rear straps. <coughs> so again, I'm going to watch my red arrow and use that as a guide. Almost all beds are marked. If they are not, it's about two feet back. We'll stop once it gets to the pen there. It's hard to remember all these steps, so you do it so fluidly you don't even think about it and then you try to start putting it in a video and there's a lot more steps to what we do than you think about. So again, adjust this around so it's nice and square on the tire. Make it certain so it comes out nice and even on both sides. Again, I pulled it tight. You got that one? I'm going to walk around to the other side. We're going to do this rear one. And again, by having the straps in the center part of the bed, this makes for a, a very nice fluid kind of transition from one side to the other. That one didn't want to move, so I ratcheted it back down and kind of pulled it again, and it moved the way it was supposed to. Again, if I can keep my strap straight, it's better. Over time, they get where they're folded over, but this one's a fairly new strap. And again, you want to get at least, try to get at least two wraps on these ratchets to hit maximum capacity on them. Now this last strap, we're going to go ahead and tilt the bed down flat. And I don't like to bang them, I like to just set them down nice and easy. Once it's down, I'm going to go ahead and roll the bed forward and put it under the locks. And lastly, we're going to put this last strap on. Want to secure in the back, 
and in the front so you want to make certain you get it just right as you're going around there and make certain it's well over the back side of the tire before you start ratcheting it down. Again, it wasn't locking there, so you want it to get in the lock. Again, we've got some deflection on the tires all the way around, and when I walk back around, I'm looking for anything that would make it a no-go, such as something rubbing or the strap not feeling just right that I can fix. Um, and we all look good. So there's one other thing that would be addressed here that some people will say is that I didn't put the car in park. Um, <clears throat> If you're choosing to do a four-point tie-down, let me shut this PTO off a little bit. It's kind of not talking over it as bad. If you're doing a four-point tie-down and a DOT tie-down, which is what we've got here, I don't want you up on my bed because you might slip and fall and hurt yourself on this, shirt, this edge. So if you've done a good securement of a four-point tie-down, I don't believe you need to put it in neutral or park. And that's what I train my guys to do is to leave the car in neutral you do a, a, a correct four point tie down that car is never going anywhere so right now we're ready to tow this car to the next spot up here to a friend of mine's garage when we get there we'll get this thing offloaded until then safe travels <coughs>